to Lewis, but so thank you. Hello. Yeah, welcome. And half the questions today are from Saskatchewan, Canada. Did you know you have so many fans in Saskatchewan, Canada? No, I did not know, but I've performed there uh, on a number of occasions. So uh, I've, I've, I've actually toured, uh, I've toured Canada three times. I've gone back and forth through the country three times. That's so great. We have schools in the uh, United States, France, Morocco, even New Zealand is, is watching, but it's nighttime. So they'll be watching tomorrow and with Asia, China. So they, they will, they will watch. And we're again, thank you so much. Let's, let's begin with, uh, if, if Gravelbourg, Saskatchewan, are, are you there? Yes. Go ahead. Mr. Black, how have you been taking care of yourself these days? especially in the last year since the pandemic hit us? Well, um, I wouldn't say that I'm doing a great job. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I always say that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've managed to, I never feel really great uh, during this time. I never go, oh boy, I wake up going, oh great, we've still got a pandemic. I couldn't be happier. Uh, I wake up and I go, I, I generally, if I feel okay, I feel like it's an accomplishment. And, uh, I, you know, I try to get out. I try to walk a lot. I try to, uh, my, my, you know, the problem that I've had is, is paying attention. I don't know how you kids are doing this. I think uh, you're remarkable because uh, I find it difficult to, to focus. My attention span is, is worse than I was when I was three years old. I just kind of like, oh, what, there, huh? Um, but, uh, and I, 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 I kind of, um, I, and I try to do some writing and I've done some work. I've done, uh, I have uh, some work that I do each day that uh, kind of keeps me going. That's the hard part was, uh, it was not being able to work really. And it like it for you guys, not being able to go to school. We hope you're happy and healthy every day. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'd like to be happy. But I'm healthy, and that's pretty good. That's close to happy. Happy's never been my thing. <laughs> well, you make a lot of people happy. Uh, right. Question number two from uh, Alvin Buckwald School in Saskatoon. Bonjour, Mr. Black. My name Bonjour. is Caleb Ultimate. You have had an incredible career as a comedian, commentator of our society, and voice artist. How did you get such a sharp intellect? What is the flame or fire that keeps you going? Well, I don't know how sharp my intellect is, but thank you. I'm glad I've got you fooled. <laughs> I've, uh, part of that was from uh, the, my friends, my family. My parents were, uh, my mother's still, uh, my mother's still alive. She's 102 and still uh, even though she's fading, she's still very sharp. My, they were both very, very bright. Um, and so they kind of kept me on, uh, you know, kept saying, you know, pay attention to this, read that. Um, let's watch this. Uh, my friends were really smart. That helped. Um, you know, so uh, what keeps me going, what keeps the, the fire going is um, uh, anger. The things really, things that I think should be, uh, you know, rectified, even though we've kind of come through this pandemic and there's this sense that, oh, we've, oh, this is, now we can see the problems. We've seen the problems. I've lived through these problems for years and now it's like we discovered them yet again. Oh, gee, there's a disparity. Oh, wow, there's some problems racially. What are you people kidding me? So, so it hopefully, uh, you know, that's what has driven me is that sense of like, let's, you know, please, let's, can we try to get this done? Can we try to do what's right by people? You know, can we, uh, can we, uh, can authority uh, show uh, some compassion from time to time? Can authority show some intelligence from time to time? Uh, how difficult is peace in a world in which it, it, we'd be, all be better off if there were peace? We all know that. And yet, for some reason, they're battling over pieces of the ground that nobody cares about. That's what keeps me going. You know, at least gets me to Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
This is your turn, Madame Cynthia. Okay, bonjour, hello again. Uh, my name is Cynthia Texera, and I am a French immersion teacher at Robert Adams Middle School in Holliston, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. My sixth grade student, Liam Collins, has a question for you on behalf of his French immersion classmates, premièrement en français and then in English. Take it away, Liam. <laughs> à toi. Good morning, Mr. Black. Okay, so I'm going to start with the French question first. Great. Nous pensons que la raison pour laquelle vous avez dit que vous aimeriez bien faire cet entretien est parce que vous avez une profonde conviction que les jeunes sont l'espoir de cette planète pour nous sortir de tous les problèmes que nous avons. Avons-nous raison de croire cela à propos de vous aussi? Une des choses qui nous a le plus inspiré à votre sujet était de regarder certaines adresses que vous avez données aux étudiants d'université. Et cela nous a vraiment motivé à sentir que nous avons quelqu'un dans notre coin. Voulez-vous nous dire ce que vous pensez de la jeunesse? And then well, I'm gonna... In English, in English, yeah. We think the reason you said you would love to do this interview is because you have a deep belief that young people are the hope of this planet to get up of the many messes we are in. Are we correct to believe that about you? One of the things that inspired us most about you was to watch some of the commencement addresses you gave university students. And it really motivated us to feel we have someone in our corner. Do you want to tell us about your views on youth? Um, uh, I, I've always felt that uh, uh, every, with every generation uh, that, that comes uh, to, into being, that, uh, that that's our hope. Because uh, as, uh, as you can see from, from my generation, and uh, uh, that is, uh, as we grow older, we seem to grow stupider. Uh, a lot of the people that you, uh, you, you would think, you, the idea is as you grow older, there's supposed to be wisdom. Uh, that's not really the case for a lot of these people. A lot of these people seem to hold on to beliefs that are, you know, that they, they had and that they can't seem to, to change. The great thing about youth is, is that you, you, you do change. You get a sense of what's going on. You have, a, you, you respond to what is occurring around you. If you look, you know, now, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, uh, in terms of the United States, the, the kids after the shooting at Parkland got together and tried to make a major difference in terms of what, how we dealt with guns in this country. Not the adults, the kids. The M Malala, uh, Greta Thunberg, there's the, 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 you know, these, the, I mean, that's representative of a generation. And, uh, and I always feel that, uh, and, and now more than ever, we, my generation was born and raised and lived in a different time. And I call that kind of time period, for lack of a better word, the industrial time period, okay? Machinery and all of that stuff. And, uh, and now you, you guys, you live in this world of phones and screens and it's technology. And we're literally in the center of moving from where my generation was born and raised to where you are, where, to the next generation, to where you are and will be going. And so I truly believe you know, you, you see things more than we do. And, uh, and, and, you, and you've experienced things that we've talked about and said, well, gee, what happens if two, two gay people get married and, and have children? Gee, won't that destroy the, the, those kids? No, it doesn't. And the reason we know that is because of you. And the reason we will know more is because of you. And the reason that you know more than us is because you know the, and understand the technology that's in front of you. And if you don't now, you will grow with it. It will become a part of you. It's not going to, it's always going to be alien to us. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Okay. Uh, we go to Notre Dame des Rapides in La Salle, Quebec. Um, hi, my name is Miley, and our question is, we would like to know what made you choose to appear on Big Bam Theory and also do so many voices on SpongeBob, 
Scooby-Doo, and many other shows. Also, we would like to know some voices and roles you enjoy doing the most. Well, um, I, I, you know, it really, you know, partly they choose you. So Big Bang Theory knew me, and uh, and I knew uh, a couple of the actors on that show, and so and the and uh, uh, and the director, and the, so the 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 producers they asked me to do it, and uh, SpongeBob they asked me to be Santa. I mean, unusual for for them to go, boy, let's find a Jewish guy to be Santa, but that's the way it's worked out. And I'm doing another SpongeBob, actually, in a week. I'm doing another one of them. So that's the reason I did them. And, it's, and I'm lucky because they're really, they're great shows. And, uh, and I know SpongeBob, the, the guy, uh, it, it, Tom Kenny, who plays that character. And, uh, and uh, I've known him for years as a comic. Uh, and uh, so it was great to be able to, to work with him. And, um, and I think that the, the roles that I've liked are... Uh, I like doing um, voiceovers because you don't really have to, you know, you just show up. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. It's not a lot of, you know, working, you know, waiting around and stuff. You go into a booth, you just do the talk. They do all of the, uh, you, you know, they get a cartoon that kind of the animation guy does all the work really of making you look great, uh, you know, get your character out there. Um, the, the roles that I've liked have been, um, I really liked Inside Out a lot. It was uh, life changing in a way. And I think there's another question coming up. I'll talk about it then. And the other role that I really loved, which was a movie, was I played a teacher or actually a, 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 a um, I played the dean of a fake school, the fake college. And the, the, the movie was called Accepted. Uh, and it was, uh, and I loved doing that because they pretty much allowed me to say whatever I wanted to say. And, that's always fun. Merci, Quebec. I have a video from uh, Keniston, Saskatchewan. Which... My name is Paul Stinson. I'm an online teacher at the SunWest Distance Learning Center based out of the town of Keniston. My students are working from their homes and communities throughout the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. We have an ongoing concern about mental health and isolation during this pandemic. You once said a sense of humor might be the only life preserver in today's world. We are looking for some advice or comfort. Do you have more you can share to young people who might be in need of comforting words or a good laugh right now? Yeah. So comfort during the pandemic and uh, kids yeah. who are at home. I'll stop sharing my screen. Well, I mean, this is a, it's a tough time, uh, I think, mentally for all of us. Um, I mean, I've been living, uh, I'm alone and everybody, there's a whole group of people who go, oh, what a lucky break, you're alone. Then you don't have to deal with all the other people. <laughs> and then there's, I go, oh, it would be great to have other people. It'd be nice to have folks around. So uh, it's tough either way you do it. It's, it's just been hard because we're in a, a, a lockdown situation. And what does kind of save you is, what a sense of humor does is really allow you to stand back from what's occurring and when you laugh, you kind of, it's like insulation almost. You go, ah, oh, whoo, boy, that's, this is not going to, it's not going to be like this forever. And that's what laughter kind of helps you understand. And, and it allows you to get away. It's another, a lot of people believe in meditation. All right, fine. That's great. But, uh, but I think laughter is another form of meditation and um, anything that makes you laugh, if it's, Find things, look for things. They're all over YouTube. Cartoons that you like, um, books that make you laugh. Uh, I can, you know, I mean, I started reading things. I, I mean, I, it's hard for me to say what um, what books to read because, the, you know, if some of you are, are too young to read the books that I would suggest. Uh, but, um, but it's really just look for things that you find funny. Um, and and even and even entertain each other, make stupid videos and show them to each other. You know, you, you know, a lot of what's going on with TikTok is all based on that. You know, and you do enough of those, you could be a millionaire by the time this whole thing is over. Apparently, um, I've not been able to hop on that bandwagon. But uh, but no, you should be able to. It's something that you know. All I can say is you know, it's really 
And it doesn't matter what you find funny. Whatever you find funny is funny. It's funny is, uh, is subjective. It's what you think. All right. If you laugh at something and your friend doesn't laugh at something, that doesn't mean that it's not funny. It's funny to you. And as long as it's funny to you and it makes you laugh, you know, go for it. And, uh, I wish I had, I wish I had some books I could recommend. And if I think of them, I will send them along. Uh, it's, it's tough. I didn't start. Re- I mean, this, my, my parents had me start reading stuff early and I just, and I, I'm, I'm not your parents. So I'm as much as I'd like to, you know, no, I can't tell you about the books. We will pass it along. Thank you so much. Uh, Morocco, uh, they sent us the wrong questions and I think it's my fault. So the question was supposed to be, we're still going to play the video and the recording because they're beautiful kids, but they're asking the same question you already answered. Uh, pardon. Alors, what do you think, Mr. Black, about the responsibility of stars and global influencers to do their part in the world? Should young people be careful who they choose to trust and follow as their idol or their role models? That's the first part. And the second part, is there anyone you think is like a worthy role model? Do you have suggestions of people we should research or we should try to interview? I, I, I don't think of myself in that way. Uh, I, I, I just think I do what I do and, um, and that my responsibility is to be good at it. And if I'm really as good as I can be at it, then I will influence you in one way or another. And uh, if I make you laugh, then great. Um, and, uh, and I'm someone else you can't really listen to for a while. So, <laughs> but, um, but it, you know, that's the way I feel. I don't feel like my job is leadership. People always say, oh, are you educating people when you do your comedy? No. I'm trying to get a laugh. If I'm not getting a laugh, then I'm not really doing my job. Um, the, the kind of people that I think, um, you know, it, it, and, and you should, you should really, uh, you know, I think you should, you know, the people that you should kind of pay attention to in terms of those type of big personalities are the people that you, you know, that you feel um, th- that uh, you feel a kinship to, that you feel, uh, or, or someone who, um, you know, uh, the, you know, reinforces the, your ideas and the way in which you look at life. Those are the ones, I mean, I'm not, you know, I just don't think you race out to go, boy, I want to be Kim Kardashian. Okay. I think that's kind of nuts, but that's me maybe, you know, but I just think you find the kind of people that really make a difference to you. And, um, and, it, and there are a whole lot of books you can read, which is another way to, outside of comedy, that you can kind of get through this. Uh, one person in particular that I was, uh, I was stunned to learn uh, was from the state I live in and did not know this and was educated in that state, and they never, never mentioned her, was uh, a woman who had a profound effect uh, 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 in, in her time, and that was a woman named Harriet Tubman, who um, who really kind of led a number of people to freedom during um, during the you know during the uh, b- before the Civil War and kind of got them out of the out of the South. I lived in Maryland. She got them out of there, and she was part of that uh, you know part of the part of that group. And if you read her life, I couldn't have lasted. Uh, I, I think I, if I was, if I went through by the time I was 12, if I went through what she went through, I'd be, I'd have been, I'd have been dead. And she just kept going. And she's one of those, and especially on a day like today where uh, I'm a, I'm a guy talking to you on International Women's Day. I was going to wear a dress, but I thought that would be too much. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's, uh, I, I think that she's someone that's well worth your time. To, to really spend time reading about. Harriet Tubman, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I will play another video. All right, we, this is the kid. I'm uh, Julie and I'm a grade six student at Dr. John G. Agnetoff School in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. My question for you today is, sometimes we get downright angry at the state of the world right now. You're known for your righteous anger. It 
So, Ben, what made you so famous in the comedy world? A lot of the things you say in your famous rants are things we can't listen to as children. However, you play, you've also played a ro the role of anger in the movie Inside Out. Do you think anger can be channeled positively and be productive sometimes? Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe that what anger is, is the energizer. Uh, it, it isn't uh, something you throw out. It took me a long time to learn this. Um, I'm going to save you a psychiatric visit here. Uh, it is something that you don't do if you're like, if you go in for a meeting with a teacher or uh, someone uh, like for a job um, or you're, you know, an interview, you don't start screaming at the person about, that. <laughs> about you know, you're crazy, well, which I've done uh, because I thought that, that I, you know, that they would really understand that I wasn't really yelling at them. Uh, my parents would, but my family yelled at each other because, uh, and, it, and so I always thought that was a way of us showing our love. Um, and, uh, but I do think it's what really uh, is the, the driving force behind making you get up, at least for me, you know, it, 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 you know, something bothers you. It's the anger about it that gets you to do something. It's the, it, that's the driving force. It gets you to, in motion. It gets you to get something done. And uh, I think that's what's, what's important about anger. And uh, if you've not seen, and I'm serious about this, uh, and it's not, not a plug, I, is, 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 but it, because I really believe in the movie Inside Out. If you've not seen Inside Out, um, it's, it's really... Uh, it's it's a it's a really good um, it, it's just a terrific animation and will and I'll help you especially now uh, having gone through uh, the the kind of mental health issues that a lot of us are dealing with it might help you sort some of your feelings out um, it, I wished I'd seen that movie when I was a kid uh, it would have been it it was really uh, it was really it would have been important so. Um, it might be, it just might be worth your time if you haven't. And there's a French version. And they were much better looking. The guy who played Anger, much better looking. I was a better Anger, but he was better looking. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, the, the school in France, uh, Versailles actually, which is the beautiful Versailles, but they, they only did the recording of the audio. So I will play the audio now. France, Versailles, oh yeah. Thank you for answering my question. The entire existence of our young global citizens movement is due to how deeply concerned we are about the state of the planet. Is this something that also concerns you? After the 17 goals of the UN, which goals do you think are especially important in 2021 and for the future? Thank you for answering my question. So we're very big about the UN goals. And is there, is there anything you think the UN is doing that we should focus on? Right now, we've been focusing on access, access to water. The UN? Yeah. I, 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 you know, I've believed in, you know, from the, very, from the time of childhood, the UN was formed, I believe, in 1948. That's a good guess, I think. Um, I always thought, what a great idea if they actually did what they set out to do. Uh, you know, the, um, the World Health Organization has had some problems. Uh, it, it'd be nice if they could straighten them out. That would help. That's an in-house thing they can deal with. Uh, I think that the dealing with the water situation is vital. I think that dealing with um, the, the vaccination worldwide is vital. Um, you know, you know, we kind of go, uh, well, you know, we in the United States, now we have vaccines here for everybody. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I think it would be good that uh, if we were able to, now that we've kind of gotten our focus back uh, from uh, from where it had gone, um, that, uh, into, and by focus back, I mean that we're dealing with reality again, that we could... Um, 
we we really should you know really you know get the get the world to start you know, producing the kind of the massive amounts of vaccines because the world doesn't open without everyone being vaccinated um and so i that's really to me outside of water which is vital uh and and which we have a problem here and i'm i know you Folks in Canada have a problem with it. I know. I know. Every throughout the whole world, there's a problem with water, uh, and, but in certain areas, they don't even have a shot at it. But uh, it's uh, those. It's it's those are the two that really need to be done. And the UN needs to be able to be. You know, it should be used as a tool by the nations of the world, and uh, not politically, but to uh, expedite things that are important for all of us. None of us here sitting in these boxes. That in these Zoom boxes, uh, really, I think if you said list the five most important things that you want in for your yourselves and your family, I believe if we wrote those down, that you know at least four of the five we would completely agree on. This isn't tough. This isn't brain surgery. Wonderful. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Uh, Bethlehem High School and Saskatoon. Are you with us? Yes. I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, my name is Amy Kelly. I teach drama at Bethlehem Catholic High School in Saskatoon. Um, and also, I'm a longtime Back in Black fan, just so you know. <laughs> um, this is my question. Two weeks ago, National Chief Bellegarde of the Assembly of First Nations agreed to write a foreword to our upcoming book called Coast to Coast to Coast, How Children Came Together During a Pandemic to Help the Planet. Last week, Leah Shriver also agreed to contribute some small paintings or doodlings to our book. Would you consider contributing something to include in the book for children to enjoy? And the book will also go to fundraising for Indigenous communities' access to water, as we were just talking about. Wow. Um, boy, I'm glad that Leah Shriver is an artist. Where did he get off doing that? Unbelievable. I, I don't know. We know a lot of people in common, but I'm going to have my friend yell at him. Put that kind of pressure, not the pressure that I, I would love to give you something. I don't know what, you know, I could give. Uh, I used to, I mean, I was a playwright for a long time, but a lot of what I wrote, you know, is not going to be um, work, work within that. Uh, I don't think. And, uh, And I sent the play, one of my, one of my, the main children's plays that I wrote, I just sent it off to a, to a, to the University of North Carolina library. So if there's something I could give you, let me know. I, I mean, whatever it is, uh, you've got it. I just don't know what to give. Uh, but I would like to help. For it could, sure. be, could be a poem, just a few lines at the, on the last page will include like, Encouraging words from each person that we interviewed, something. Oh, encouraging words I got. I got a lot of encouraging words. Right. Yeah, no, that would that'd be my pleasure if you can just get in touch with me. And it's good that you're teaching theater, you know. That's really uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. The last question. Because Halifax, uh, the high school, Charles B. Allen High School, they're very special to us. They're having a pandemic related, uh, they, they couldn't join today. So we're, our thoughts are with Halifax today. Uh, Cheetahs, we hope everything's good for you guys. And um, the, the last question is, some of our students in other countries have never had a chance um, To meet, to meet an American person. Like we have these ideas about American people and that's why we're doing this US series. We're trying to get to know like the place of the US in the world right now, the things are changing. And, and you're kind of an ambassador for, for some of the countries who are watching and, and, and you're kind of an ambassador of the US to us. And what do you think, like do you have a message about the US? Like, is it going to be okay? Oh. And the other thing, do you have a final message for the children around the world as an American? Do I have a message for the children around the world? Um, the, 
I've always felt, um, to be honest, uh, my brother lived in Europe. My brother lived in uh, Norway for five years and lived in uh, Paris and in Antibes for another five years. Uh, spoke French and Norwegian. Uh, in, in, and uh, I stayed here. I was working in theater, so I could afford to go nowhere except across the street. Um, but uh, one thing that I've always felt was an affinity toward uh, um, other countries. I've, I've never felt like uh, that we were, that, oh, you know, this whole thing, boy, we're America, we're the best, that nonsense, that, you know, you know, boy, nobody's greater than we are. I, I literally, in my act, I would go around my own country going, you can't say we're the greatest country in the world if you've never been anywhere else. Okay, that's just idiotic. You can't claim to be great if you if you've never you you didn't you didn't, haven't even been to Canada. You can get you can you can get to Canada drunk on a bet, you idiot. So I mean, come on. So it's like uh, let's not be stupid about this. And then I started uh, eventually be through comedy. I started visiting other countries and I spent a lot of time in Holland of all places in Amsterdam. And I taught stand up there. I spent a lot of time amongst the people. I did a lot of traveling there. I, um, uh, and, uh, I, um, and, and through, uh, a number of European countries and I felt and performed there. And I always felt like I, it was a lot easier in some ways to perform in, in Amsterdam than it was at times to perform in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, because there I didn't have to, they, they already knew what the joke was in, uh, in Amsterdam. They'd been watching, uh, you know, they'd been watching us. I mean, what, what Americans really miss the point on here, uh, most Americans, is they want, the world watches us. They pay attention to us. They hope that we're like the big experiment, okay? We're the deal. We put everybody here. We dropped everybody here. Everybody can come on in until the last four years. We had some, you know, we won't even go in there. So, so we, you know, everybody can come here. We're going to work this out. We're going to try to figure it out. And, um, and so, so people are, have always had their eyes on us. And so we're going to be good at it. We're not going to be good at it. But one thing that they did know was is that when I'm doing a joke over there, they're not Democrats or Republicans or whatever. They're people who just are people. And they know what the joke is from the beginning. They're not bringing some idea of like what side they're on. They already know we're idiots. Okay. When I'm here, it's like one side goes, well, no, they're the idiots. No, they're the idiots. Nope. Uh, and so I've always been amazingly comfortable with the, with the rest of the world. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I've loved to perform in Canada is I feel um, very comfortable there. I feel that Canada is like us, only you have, a, you have something, a gene that we seem to have lost, which is called empathy. Uh, you, you're empathetic. You actually know that other people have problems. You go, oh, maybe we can help. And uh, and, and then I, and, but I've also discovered over time that we can talk about this another time that you guys are screwed up in your own way too, but we all are. Everybody's got their own <laughs> nonsense going on. But, uh, but so I, I, I just feel like um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's that, you know, we are the world. That's the deal, you know, uh, not sung by Michael Jackson, just we are the world. We're, and once we went to the moon, uh, if you ever want to really get a sense of what we are, uh, kids, um, just look at that picture of, uh, of, the, of Earth taken from the moon. That's the deal. That's the way it is. We're all in it together. <laughs> We're all on one planet. Okay? You can mark the globe up all you want. But eventually, uh, eventually we got to get over the history and we got to move on. And, uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I thought that my generation, you know, we asked the questions earlier about why I have hope for you. My generation, when we were young, 
started to take little baby steps. Every generation did. My generation started to start to do those babies and then kind of got lost. Uh, and you'll get lost along the way for whatever reason. Um, but just be sure and leave some breadcrumbs so you can get home. Leave those out. And leave them for the next generation. And they'll pick them up. And we'll, we'll all be all right. Mr. Black, you are incredibly gracious in accepting this interview. It's a bit surreal as I was growing up that I had this opportunity. To, we all were able to listen to you speak on important topics. And this is for kids to grow their communication, confidence, and thinking skills, especially critical thinking. And this will make a huge difference. So we hope you would consider returning as a host for future interviews to introduce more guests. We hope you would uh, introduce individuals that you think would be uh, a good fit for children to, to learn from. And we really wish you the very best. And we would like to bestow, you are our first person that we bestow a little award, which we will send to you to call you an honorary young global citizen. If you accept it, you are now a young global citizen. And That's very kind. Thank you so much for this interview. Everybody will say goodbye to Mr. Black. I'd like to just say that I hope you kids understood what I was talking about. Were you able to follow me? Was that too crazy? Was that, was it, could you follow it? I mean, cause I don't, I talk to kids like, like you get it. You know, I, I don't talk now. I haven't got time. <laughs> I think the reason we started this movement is because kids know and understand a lot more than we give them credit for. Yeah. And we realize how, as we do these, and the kids are working on these questions, uh, that we have a lot of hope in, in the young generation. Great. Well, thanks for making my day. You made our whole week. Thank you so much. Yeah, now I got to go back to doing nothing. <laughs> Everybody say goodbye. Bye, guys. Au revoir, merci. Au revoir, Au revoir. Mr. Black. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Goodbye. you. Wonderful, Mr. Black. Goodbye, everyone.